So did you have to like spend time in the field with police officers to understand their workflow and kind of how they did things in the car? So um, I just had this idea that I don't know, like, like, so if you're out there in the field with the police officers, you probably saw some crazy stuff. So any, any interesting stories that you can share there? The, that's one of the hallmarks of Mark 43 is we spend a lot of time in the field. Way too much do we hear that people uh, solution things from behind their desk and they come up with uh, designs that, you know, is relevant and they make sense to the engineer, but not the user in the field. So we try to put our engineers, our designers, our product managers, even our, our salespeople and our growth team in the field as much as possible to appreciate what the users are going through. Um, the lion's share of it, a lot of it have, have been ride-alongs. I mean, we do a lot with making sure that patrol officers that are in the field um, really have a great experience because they're, they're the majority of the people that use the products that we're on. Um, in terms of stories, we've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of stuff. It's, it's exciting and stimulating to be with these officers. More often than not, you realize that policing isn't so much like the, it's not, you know, this kind of cowboy mentality and breaking down doors and, and arresting people. It's, it's actually pretty challenging and stressful even to just observe it. Um, I mean, you're going into places where they're really either you know, places that are depressed neighborhoods or people that have tough drug problems or places that we've gone in and you, it seems like a wonderful house from the outside and people are, um, you know, they're, there's hoarders that live there and it's just kind of, and there's, and there's kids in the house and it's just challenging yeah. stuff like that. Um, and it's just so inspiring to see that police officers, again, one out of the hundred things that they deal with are crazy, cool, fun car chases and, you know, the exciting Hollywood stuff. And it's much yeah. more dealing with these, these problems. That's not to say that I haven't been in a police car that has been going very fast to <laughs> chase somebody down. Um, I won't say anything about, you know, which department or where we were, but <laughs> that was an exciting thing. And I think we were, we were going fast enough where I didn't have time to think of what, whether I was scared or what, if, was I going to tell my mom about this? I just had a big smile. <laughs> so that was exciting. Um, but yeah, you, it, 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 it kind of runs the gamut. And I should say too, it's not only the first responders in the field doing the, the kind of in car and in field police work a huge proportion of the people that use our products are dispatchers that sit behind six screens in a kind of dimly lit room all day where they can really understand where everybody is, how to make sure all their first responders out in the field are safe. Um, and then it's also records personnel, the people that submit information to the FBI at, at the end of every month from police departments. It's detectives who spend a lot of time at their desk trying to understand what leads are available and, and how they could potentially close the case. And it's command staff too. I mean, the people that are responsible for saying, I have to make sure that the uh, crime drops in the fifth precinct. Or I got to make sure that theft from autos goes down, and we got to manage that. Um, so there's there's a whole span of users that that touch these products, and we try to make sure we put our people in front of every single one. So what does the platform actually do? Because there's multiple components to it, and you just talked about some of the users that get benefit from it. But so so how does it actually all work together? Sure. So there's there's two major components that we have that we build. They're big complex enterprise applications and there's some things that you can kind of, kind of consider add-ons or um, it's kind of tangential products. So the, the first big one is something called CAD, Computer Aided Dispatch. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's using computers to understand for a particular jurisdiction, call it uh, Chicago PD, call it Boston, call it, call it um, you know, uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, it doesn't matter. For that agency, understanding where all of their units are at any given time. So imagine a real-time map with a little dot that for every police car that's in the field or every uh, bike officer that's in the field or every person that's on foot in the field, a dispatcher can understand who may be available to take a call. They can understand which units may have a trauma kit available or which first responders can speak Spanish or just other kind of uh, abilities and things. And you, you can think about fire trucks. You can figure out um, you know, just like fire responders which ones have ladders that can reach the 30th floor of a building because if you send a tiny fire truck to a big structure fire, that may not be useful for that structure fire at all. So um, it's understanding exactly where the fleet is in real time. Somebody calls 911 and says, hey, there's been a shooting at the corner of 14th and 1st. The dispatcher says, okay, unit 123 is closest to the corner of 14th and 1st. They're available and they have a trauma kit. They get on the radio and they say, unit 123 dispatch to the corner of 14th and 1st. Here's what you're going into. And then the dispatcher is kind of the eye in the sky the entire time, touching base with the, dispatch, uh, with the first responder to make sure that they're safe and that they're getting the job done if there's anything they need or if they need to send backup, anything like that. That whole tool is to just manage the fleet and understand what kind of the real-time operations of the department are. 
So with yep. modern technology, I see how this is all possible. How are they doing it before? So I do have to give credit to some of the existing CAD products out there. They, they get the job done and computer-aided dispatch exists. There are shortcomings though. Um, for example, much of the computer-aided dispatch that exists right now is purely on-premise. So they have all their servers in the basement. And if somebody trips over an AC cable or um, you know, the, the room floods or something like that, then the departments do have to revert and go to walkie-talkie and like post-it notes or, or flashcards where you're just writing where this, the unit is and you're handing off these flashcards and it's, it's, a, it's a crazy archaic model. And there are actually still, shockingly, some agencies that still dispatch purely by radio. You'd expect that for every agency in 2019 that they would have all of their cars inventoried showing up real time on a map. There are still some agencies in the U.S. that get on a radio and say, hey, where are you? Okay, go. You know, it's, it's somebody just sitting by a, by a phone with a desk and a sheet of paper, effectively. It's crazy. Um, but so the infrastructure isn't really there. And there's so many things that modern technology can allow uh, departments to, and agencies to do right now. Like um, you can use machine learning, artificial intelligence to say, okay, you know what? The closest person to an event may actually not be the best person to dispatch to that event. We know that this event is a fire, so we should make sure that we're dispatching this type of fire truck, or we should make sure that to a shooting, we should always dispatch somebody that has um, some sort of trauma kit or something like that. So kind of this concept of like smart recommendations instead of having to rely on the dispatcher to do it, that would be something that is just kind of low hanging fruit for a lot of uh, agencies to, to latch onto. Um, and the second product, the other main product, you arrive at the scene of the crime, you arrive at the fire, you arrive at the shoot, whatever, you always have to write some sort of report about it. Police officers and first responders are constantly documenting what they do. So if I'm a police officer and it is a shooting, if it's a cat stuck up in a tree, if it's a homicide, if it's a sexual assault, I may have to write an offense report, I may have to write a traffic crash report, I may have to write an arrest report, I may have to write a field contact report. There's a ton of different options and across the US, the information that I have to collect for an offense report in California is way different than the information that I have to collect in Florida, which is way different than the information that I have to collect in Boston. So for Mark 43, we kind of tout ourselves as the TurboTax of report writing. So the report is very dynamic. If you put in information about an arson or you select that you're writing a report about arson, you get asked questions about arson instead of getting asked questions about homicide. The existing world the RMS world is really kind of broken and fractured right now, not to, not to overuse those two very Silicon Valley words, broken and fractured, but um, it's, it's just not in a good spot. It's not in a good place, mainly because the technology seems like it's been built in like the late 80s, early 90s, and it just hasn't improved. So police officers very typically are filling out things that look like PDFs on their screen. And what can they do at the end of the life cycle of the information? They can print out PDFs and that's it. They can't send all the information to their analysts to say, hey, where's crime going up? Where's crime going down? How should we start allocating our resources differently? Where should people be patrolling more? Where should be, people be patrolling less? Um, and that's not to say that there's not another just whole host of issues that present themselves in courts where you can't prove who attested to creating this information or who didn't create the information. And there's just a million judiciary and, and um, kind of court procedural problems that introduce themselves as well. So both both types of applications are in a bad spot. One, you know, CAD more for kind of like the infrastructure and functionality piece, and then RMS, it just hasn't caught up to where the rest of technology is right now. So it's fascinating. I mean, it's, it's document management, right? But obviously, it's taking that information and making it useful after it's collected. Because, like you said, then uh, if there is a court case and an investigation that follows through, you need access to those records. Yeah, I mean, it's a no-brainer. And then the, the final two things that I'll just touch on really quickly that we do. Um, we do evidence and property management. So if there's a stolen bicycle, if there's heroin that's found on the ground, if there's uh, shell casings at the scene of a shooting, all those things get picked up, bagged, tagged, and stored in an evidence warehouse. We make a product that you can go around and you can just take inventory of those things. You can figure out when those things need to be returned to the owner. You can figure out when those things need to be destroyed. And one of the things that I'm most proud of with these products is that the kind of current way to do it is that if you're in a huge evidence warehouse, which typically are way overstocked, it's really hard to get rid of evidence just because the management practices behind it are just really, really awful. You have to get up on a ladder and you have a laptop and the laptop is connected to a power cord and the laptop is also connected to a serial cable that's 
connected to a scanner. It's like it's a it's like a work it's like a workman's comp thing, you know, written all over. Right, waiting to happen, yeah. Um, we are up there scanning on the top shelf, and it's a whole it's a whole crazy thing. Mark forty three. All of our scanning products are all just on simple Android or iOS phones. You go, you scan. It's it's a much more lightweight thing, and we've kind of taken a an Amazon shopping basket approach to how you scan the evidence, collect the evidence, keep track of the evidence. Um, it's just a much more intuitive way to do it. And the final thing is a whole analytics suite on top of all of this. So for all of the wonderful information that you're collecting, now your analysts and your detectives and your command staff can actually say, this is how crime is changing. This is where we need to devote patrol hours more intimately. This is how uh, the city has become better because we deployed XYZ um, initiative. And finally, you know, this, this is some information that can maybe help us solve some crimes that we weren't able to before. Thank you.